Apple's WWDC event is now official, happening on June 10th at Apple's iconic headquarters. And if you thought you noticed something fishy about Apple's invite images and animations, you were completely right because Apple decided to include some rather interesting Easter eggs into this announcement, which I'll explain in just a second. So in this video, I'm gonna go through every major announcement we can expect, including four new hardware products, which I'm actually super excited about, as well as perhaps Perhaps the biggest software updates we've had in years, but first, let's talk Easter eggs. First of all, Apple made the very weird decision to essentially merge both W's in WWDC, and some are speculating that it's actually hinting at new AI features. Why? Well, because Apple's Senior Vice President of Marketing, Greg Joswiak, posted the announcement on Twitter alongside saying that it's going to be absolutely incredible with both A and I capitalized, which is basically a huge Easter egg that proves it'll be focused on AI. AI features. And that could actually explain the merged W's in WWDC, because if you look closely, it looks like IAAI, which is basically a mirror image reflection of AI. But wait, it doesn't stop there. Joe Rezignal posted out that this is the first time that WWDC isn't being held in the first week of June since 2020, with it being scheduled for June 10th through the 14th, and some people are going as far as to say that the number 14 hints at AI as well, since four stands for A in gamer tech nerd language, once again flipped to say AI. And by the way, all the graphics in the WWDC invite have been done with the color scheme of Siri. Okay, okay, I'll stop with all the crazy Easter egg speculation, but I can 100% guarantee that it is gonna be about AI because Tim Cook himself confirmed last month that Apple is gonna break new ground on generative AI this year, unlocking transformative opportunities for Apple's users. So with that in mind, let me jump into the first major announcement, which is gonna be iOS and iPadOS 18. Just yesterday, Mac Rumors covered a leak that shows that Apple is planning to add a new custom route creation feature within Maps and iOS 18, finally, since Google Maps has had this for years. Another new to Apple feature coming to iOS 18 is actually being able to fully customize your home screen, allowing you to place blank spaces and move apps to any spot you'd like, which Androids have had forever. Mark Gurman also said that Apple would add a new hearing aid mode to AirPods Pro in iOS 18. But getting into some of the new unique features, Apple has apparently created their very own chat GPT competitor codenamed Ajax, which would be huge because every iPhone user would get access to generative AI all at the same time. However, we got bad news yesterday from Mark Gurman, basically confirming that iOS 18 won't include this feature, likely because Apple can't get it finished on time. Alternatively, Apple's been rumored to be in talks with Google, OpenAI, and Baidu to try and see if they could license their Gemini and ChatGPT AI features so they could at least have something to show this year in terms of AI to make their investors happy. Apple was even rumored to be developing an AI tool to help developers write code for apps using AI to make it much quicker and more efficient. We also got a ton of leaks claiming that Apple was planning to completely revamp Siri to turn it into the ultimate virtual assistant using LLMs or large language models. So millions of people would be able to use Siri to instantly create generated images and text, including things like creating GIFs out of a sequence of images, making edits to photos using just Siri, even creating a 3D environment out of a single video file and much more. But the biggest piece of evidence of all is that multiple analysts have reported that Apple's upcoming A18 chips for the iPhone 16 lineup will feature a significantly upgraded neural engine to power iOS 18's generative AI features, including some features that could be exclusive to the iPhone 16 models only, which is a big deal. Now, other than that, we of course should be expecting the new Vision OS 2.0 update, which we don't really know much about, as well as all the other software updates like watchOS and everything else, 
But now with that said, I really wanna get into the new four hardware products that we should expect. The first one we're expecting at WWDC is the new Mac Mini, because if you weren't aware, it still only comes with the M2 chips, while the M3 MacBook Pro has been available ever since October, and earlier this month, we got the new M3 MacBook Air, but still no M3 Mac Mini update. I personally expected both of these to get updated at the same time at a March event, but it looks like that is not happening and we're still waiting on new iPads to launch next month. So I think that points to the new Mac mini coming at WWDC. Now, why would Apple wait so long? Well, the only explanation is that they want to release it alongside the new Mac Studio, which is the second new product. But first, I wanna mention that you shouldn't expect anything special from this new Mac mini, just basically another chip swap like we saw with the new MacBook Air, moving over to the new M3 chip, but of course it's also gonna have the M3 Pro option as well, which is very fast. Now getting into the Mac Studio, this update is gonna be by far the most interesting because if it comes at WWDC, Apple will be officially unveiling the new M3 Ultra chip, and this chip is gonna be completely different in a pretty amazing way. How do I know this? Well, because Apple left something very important out of the new M3 Max chip. Going back to the past, both the M1 Max and M2 Max chips came with a secret portion of silicon on the bottom of the die, which allows Apple to combine two Max dies into an Ultra die using their Ultra Fusion architecture and technology. Well, guess what? The M3 Max no longer has this Ultra Fusion interconnect at all, which means one of two things. Either Apple is planning to skip the M3 Ultra completely this year and wait for the M4 series, which means no Mac Studio update at all, or they're planning a complete revamp for the M3 Ultra chip. The first option doesn't make any sense because right now the M3 Max is almost as fast as the M2 Ultra Max Studio and you can get it in a laptop, which leads me to believe that Apple will be redesigning the M3 Ultra chip in a big way. And according to a leak by Twitter account CorpCry back in January, Apple is apparently getting rid of efficiency cores for the M3 Ultra and higher tier chips. This actually makes a ton of sense now that we know that the M3 Max die no longer has the Ultra Fusion interconnect, which means that if Apple wants to make an M3 Ultra chip, they basically need to redesign it from scratch as its own chip. So why not take out the useless efficiency cores at the same time to make more room for additional performance cores. But the even bigger hint is that CorpCry also said higher tier chips, which hints at the M3 Extreme, which was discussed years ago by Mark Gurman, but was canceled because I don't think it scaled very well at all, because it was too difficult to connect four Max dice together and have good scaling because they'd have to use all these different interposer layers and they would lose all of the efficiency. The most obvious solution is to create a brand new M3 Ultra die and then put the Ultra Fusion interconnect on that chip so that you can connect two Ultras together to create the M3 Extreme chip for the Mac Pro while retaining much better scaling using Ultra Fusion. Yes, I believe it makes perfect sense to release the M3 Extreme at WWDC in a new Mac Pro, which is the third new product. And why? Well, because the current Mac Pro is a joke. It comes with the same M2 Ultra chip that comes in the less expensive Mac Studio, so there's no reason at all to buy it, especially since the M3 Max chip is almost as powerful in a laptop design. But I'll dive much deeper into the M3 Ultra and M3 Extreme chips in another video. So if you wanna see that, subscribe right now so you don't miss out. But with that said, the last new device to expect at WWDC is actually the new 32 inch XDR display 2, which will apparently have 7K resolution. So with that said, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.